Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is a follow-up to last week's on the Inner Ocean 4 track. My goal with that video is to create a visual manual, but with this one, I want to explore some of the ways you can actually use the device. I'm going to be covering the tips for getting started section of the manual, some creative uses of automation, and highlighting some Max for Live devices, which I feel work nicely with the plugin. The tips for getting started can be found on page 10 of the manual. I'm going to start with the first one. This example is inspired by the Montreal Assembly Count to 5 delay pedal and the Norn script Lark. We're going to be recording one sound source into all four buffers. The buffers will all be set to different playback speeds. For this example, I'm going to be using my OP1 as the sound source. First, set the input of each channel to your sound source. Next, I'm going to toggle on overdub for each channel and set the feedback to 100%. Now I'm going to adjust the playback speed of each of the buffers. I've set each channel's buffer length to 8 seconds, so now I can start playback and enable recording. If you want to get really crazy, you can automate the loop start position or speed knobs. If you want to use this more as a delay, you can lower the feedback percentage and shift the loop start positions. I want to show how this can be used as a delay really quick, so I've set the feedback percentages to 50%. Now I can record arm these and hit play and record just like in the previous example. The next tip is the percussion from field recordings example. In the menu, I mentioned using a field recording from one of my Inner Ocean sample packs, but for this video, I'm going to be using the audio files from the wood percussion folder in the sample pack that comes with the device. I've dropped samples 1 through 4 in the channels, and now I'm going to use the synced length control to set the loops to various lengths that are in time with the session tempo. Now when I hit play, you'll notice that these are all rhythmically repeating. Now we can scrub through the buffer to find a part that sounds good. From here, I like to adjust the playback speed of the tracks. With atonal samples, it's nice to use the speed change knob in free instead of synced. This sounds pretty cool, but the way to get really interesting results in my opinion is to integrate automation. In this example, I find that the Ableton LFO works really well. I like to set the shape to random and then raise the slew rate to prevent snappy changes.
You can also automate the start position of the loop to target other hits within the sample for added variation. The final tip in the manual is to integrate Ableton's LFO. This is a bit redundant since I touched on it in the last example, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Ableton's LFO is really a great way to get wild results from this device. There are so many parameters you can target with the LFO, ranging from the speed knob to the volume sliders to the loop playhead position to the entire FX section. The last tip I want to mention is using the device for chord drones. This is probably the most common way the actual 4-track recorders are used. This device brings that to the next level. For this example, I'm going to be using the Deerhorn chord samples. I've dropped all four of the samples into the device and started them looping. Unlike the hardware tape players, we can individually pitch shift the tracks. This allows you to create all sorts of chords instead of just pitch shifting the entire thing. The samples provided create a minor ninth chord. By pitch shifting the third and the ninth, we can turn this into a major chord. You can draw these pitch changes in with automation. Depending on how you draw your curve, these changes can be instantaneous or glide. Before I get out of here, I'm going to briefly go over some Max for Live devices that I feel work really well with the plugin. If you've watched my other videos, you'll probably be familiar with most of these. The first one is the LFO, which I've already talked about a good bit in here. The second one is Survey, which is an old favorite of mine. This allows you to step sequence any parameter in the plugin. This is especially useful for dialing in specific changes to different targets. I'll put a link to this in the video description. The final one I want to mention is the Ableton Envelope Follower. This outputs MIDI information relative to the audio levels coming out of the device, which can enable some cool reactive changes. These three are my go-to, but there are endless devices out there, and I'm looking forward to seeing which ones click with people as they dive into the plugin. I hope these tips are useful to you as you start exploring the device. Like I said at the end of the last chapter, I'm really excited to see what interesting ways people start using the plugin, especially ways that I never thought of. One of the coolest moments for me was stumbling upon the technique I mentioned in the percussion from field recording section. I never thought of using this as a percussion generator, but for some reason it just makes sense to me after messing around with it. If you come across any cool Max for Live devices you find pair well, or any techniques I didn't mention in this video, I'd love to hear about them. Either leave a comment on the video or DM me on Instagram. That's all I've got for this week. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.